Good day. I am Molly Wheeler. I am a nursing instructor, qualified nurse actually, midwife, and uh, Molly, Molly Wheeler. <laughs> and I do um, training. I'm an instructor, qualified, and I have a school where I do training. So my experience with Alzheimer's would be trained to train um, caregivers to go to the homes and give care. Um, I was told just to give some two experiences, but I'll start with an experience of my own uh, mom. I said I train nurses, so in my school I train my sister. She um, came and did program with me how to take care of the elderly um, patients and so on. And then um, I started getting reports from her about my mom and because my mom lived with her and she would say, um, she has so much tricks, you know, I, I don't know um, why she's trying all these tricks. So she would say she can't remember this and um, she don't want to do that and uh, um, she wants to cook and she forget the stove on and whatnot. And little signs, um, what I would call warning signs, that normally the caregiver who is not really trained um, or who does not understand dementia um, would not pick up easily. So of course, I will talk to her and say, look, I think my mom or mom is in early dementia and um, we have to go easy with her and try to help her. Um, but she could not understand that. And that, as an instructor, that is one of the um, problems that I see with the people who I train. I will tell them, uh, you know, we have the list of some of the warning signs that you would see and um, the different stages. And although we said that, um, although in, in the textbook or as we um, talk about the, the Alzheimer's, you would say that they have stage one and stage two and whatever, that it does not happen like that in the real world. All right, you have people who we say might be just mild dementia or the first stage, and we see them exhibiting symptoms um, for a second stage or middle age stage. So I will tell her this, and she um, could not agree with me. She felt her mom was um, trying things, um, wanting to have her own way and things like that. However, when it got really bad, as far as I was concerned, I decided to get a helper for her. So we got this helper, and... Um, she wasn't really quite satisfied with that. So on my, when I went away on vacation, when I came back, she had fired the caregiver because she felt that our mom was just trying, playing tricks and really um, didn't need that kind of help. And the sad thing about that is that one day, and, and my mom lived alone um, with her. So when she went to work, there was nobody there. And I will warn her about this. And she knew that things, something was wrong because she would tape up the stove because my mom liked to cook and do things and she tape up the stove and she was a seamstress so she would make sure that the machine was closed down because she said all things were happening. And yet all things were happening and she did not um, realize or pick up that these were signs of early dementia. And one day, sad to say, um, she got home and my mom was lying on the floor unconscious, not knowing how long she was there. And that, you know, I, I continue to remember that and it's very sad because from that day she never, we took her to the hospital and things like that, but she never really was herself again. And eventually she passed on. So that was um, very traumatic for me in that I'm here teaching people um, the signs, what to look for, how to care, and that has happened to my mom. However, as an instructor, as I said, I have people come into the class and I will, um, we go through the signs and so on, and when they come back from their training, I'll ask, well, you know what you see, what were some of the signs? And um, somehow they do not, um, because again, in the homes, what I have found is that there are not people there who are trained and who do not understand. Lots of the homes we have really, um, if you go to the homes to visit, because most of the Alzheimer's patients I see in Trinidad and Tobago, um, if they're not in the, um, at home with their families, they would be in these homes. And these homes are really geriatric care. Um, they are not really um, qualified or, or, or ready for that type of patient. They, they don't have caregivers there who know a lot about it. So a lot of times these are missed. 
And I remember one caregiver saying to me, oh, Miss Wheeler, I don't know why you're teaching us all those things, you know, because we don't do them things in the home. One of the reasons why sometimes they say they don't have the time or they don't understand, all right, and sometimes they don't have the staff to do what is required. Um, you, we talked about um, communication. Um, one of the things that they lose very early is how to communicate. And um, sometimes the caregivers get very irritable, I have found, when they cannot um, get that communication level that they think that they need from this um, patient, um, person who is actually going into dementia. And uh, they get very irritable. So I have had lots of calls also from homes and also lots of families who are stressed out and do not know what to do. And that's, to me, my biggest experience. I'm always called to say, look, I have my mother here. I don't know what next to do it. And they get angry sometimes. Um, sometimes they are, like my sister, in denial. And um, you want to, to help them. But again, here, there isn't much that you can really do. And that's one of the reasons why I want to encourage us, and that's one of the reasons why I, as an individual, as an instructor, joined the Alzheimer's Association, because I felt that together, you know, I can learn so much more that I can, I can help um, those who are out there trying but do not know what to do. Um, I mean, families really, really go through a hard time, and I was touched with Miss Deborah Jean's daughter because I worked with her, and I know she was a very, very good nurse. And um, to hear that, you know, one of my colleagues like that, but I've, I'm seeing it all the time when I go to the family's house or when I go in the homes, there are people there. And um, Dr. Raja talks about um, getting them involved. And that's one of the sad things we have because the homes, most of them do not understand. I mean, this condition as such, they would have the um, people there or whatever, the individuals just sitting there, you know, doing nothing, just staring. And I try in my courses, what I teach is how to do these recreational programs, orientation, to get them involved, to get them moving, to get them thinking, to get them seeing. So those are some of the experiences I have had. And um, what um, we really re need to do is, well, I suppose, get that plan going where we really, really have people who are trained and who could understand what this dementia is all about and how really to help families in particular who go through a lot of stress because, again, sometimes they don't have the money to take them in a home or they realize when they take them in the home, because I've known lots of people who send their um, relatives in a home and then have to take them out because they were not getting the kind of care that they wanted. All right, so thank you very much. Well,